Welcome to the Sword Coast on Faerun. This is uh, Neverwinter Online. I am currently wanting to talk to you about guilds because there's been a lot of uh, discussion this week, it is Stronghold Week, about guilds. And this guild in particular is a level 8 guild. We have made multiple upgrades this week, working on getting all the structures we need up to rank 4. We have one more left. As you can see, it says we need Fey and Frozen. We actually have the Frozen we need. And the reason I'm discussing this is I have gotten a couple of requests by guild members. See, we're short about 15,204 fey trinkets to take the target is the barracks to take the barracks to level four. Once we get it to level four, we'll be able to work on back to back stronghold upgrades. So you have to have seven other structures at rank four. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the guild hall counts as seven. Now, I've had several people ask me, because we're a smaller guild, and sometimes it's harder keeping recruitment. They said, you need to upgrade the guild hall. The thing about upgrading the guild hall is it takes currency, and it takes a lot of campaign currency. Most of the resource stuff is pretty easy to come by. Astral diamonds, you can see here I'm collecting astral diamond chests. You send your gatherers from the workshop out to do those. It's no big deal there. And then you can donate those to the stronghold. The thing that is hardest to get are heroic shards. And then adventure shards. Adventure shards being the, the absolutely worst. Because you can only get 20 of them a day six days out of the week. There is a seventh day where you can only get ten because there is no support mission that day. Heroic shards, you can get somewhere between 20 to 30 a day. Dungeoneering shards, you can get 30 a day. Conqueror shards, I'm not sure exactly what the maximum is. This is typically used to upgrade PvP structures. Now, wood, stone, metal, and food are from your production structures. And as you can see, we have four production structures, all at rank four. You, that requires, that just requires going out and tending them. So if you are a member of a guild and you're going around the stronghold, tend your production structures. Profession supplies comes from things like lumber, uh, cloth, ingots, or other things like vouchers. This fills up very quickly because a lot of people can just craft these items and drop them in. So profession supplies typically fills up really, really fast. Gold, gold is a no-brainer. It's easy, you know. Gold is easy to come by in this game if you utilize workshop. Glory, you get this from PvP stuff. It's a lot harder to get glory than and conquer shards than it is some of the other stuff in the game. Gems is easy because people will just drop gems that drop in the world. Surplus equipment's pretty easy because, well, you can just drop, you know, blue or greater equipment that you pick up along the way. Astral diamonds, you can either put in actual astral diamonds or you can drop in chests. I always drop in chests. It is counterproductive to your character to use actual astral diamonds to dump in there grind up your workshop and send your and spend gold to send your gatherers out to get astral diamond chests with astral diamond chests 99 of them net you 10 times on a bonus reward this is two times the event it gives you 10 times the guild marks so 99 of them give you 990 guild marks. This is 
a little bit harder to come by. Frozen only comes out of the stuff in Icewind Dale. And you either have to craft vouchers here in your campaign, and this tune has never done it, but once you get up here, you can do frozen vouchers. It gives you a thousand frozen treasures for your guild. Then, Fey Trinkets, this drops now from Sharandar. So whenever you go out and you get the bashing orders and the essence and stuff like that, things that you would use in the Sharandar store, like if you view campaign, oh, it may not let me see the store there. Hold on. And there is a reason behind this video. Uh, Sharandar, let's see if it lets me see the store. There it is. Like the bashing orders, you can buy gear, which is now, you know, 1,500 gear. You can see I'm wearing 1,600 gear, and 1,600 gear I've got is already obsolete for seals. But you can get these uh, bashing orders. You can get these potions of undead, and you can get these essence of darkness. Now, those are what you can donate to the coffer here for Fae. Dark is a little bit harder as well. The Dread Ring is where you get the dark stuff right here. He, this one has not completed the Dread Ring either. Oh, he has completed the Dread Ring. I take that back. He hasn't completed the gauntlets and stuff. But you can create these dark vouchers, which will give you a thousand. But it requires going out to the Dread Ring. And this requires you going out to Icewind Dale. This requires you going out to... Uh, Sharandar. Tyranny is easiest to drop. Uh, tyranny chromatic strands drop um, just whenever you're out fighting things and it allows you to drop that into the coffer. Influence is gained by one of two ways in the stronghold. Well, one of three ways. Boon structures provide you quests that you can go out to certain areas and either do heroics, do dungeons, do um, kill a certain amount of things or pick up, do races or pick up uh, things out of resource nodes. That last one would be the Explorer's Guild. And that would give you uh, quests, re a quest reward that gives you influence. The other one is by doing Marauders, which is typically done by uh, a group. And what it is, is at the bottom of the hour a gentleman will form on the bridge and you'll want to have a group probably 10 people to do at least one gate uh we actually did three gates the other day and did 10 rounds and it will double the currency a lot of people don't realize that if you defend all three gates and you go 10 rounds the currency will double in the rewards that you get but you have to defend all three gates. This is the gate that most people defend, and a portal will form at that point, a portal will form at that point, and a portal will form at that point. And then during certain rounds, uh, the second and fourth round, there will be a catapult that will appear up there. Now, if you're defending all three, you would defend this gate and this gate as well. Um, I'm n I've never defended the north gate, but I think you only get a portal here and a portal here. During the south gate, you get a portal here and you get a portal here. And then the catapult appears up here. And then I believe the catapult appears up here on the north gate, although I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, but it is completely doable. And that will award you, and although it's double influence week, it only affords you, it only rewards you 600 influence. And you can only do this one time per week on a tune. So I'm on Mickle. If I did it on Mickle today, I can't do it again until the reset next Monday. But you can do it one time per day per week. Like if I took 42 tunes that I have, and did Marauders every two hours until they were all done, 
I could not do it again on any of them until the reset Monday morning, which is today. Um, the other way to get it is by doing five heroics. Now, you could do bickering beholders. By doing the big heroic, once every 20 hours, you will get an additional 10 heroic shards, 20 during the double event. But if you do five of these, you get diminishing returns to 400 influence. Like 150, 120, 75, 35, then 20. If you are doing it during a double, that will be 800 influence. And if you have this character that it is out of the Zen market, you do have to buy it, but it is an account unlock for all characters. It will give you 10% influence gained. You need millions of influence to upgrade the stronghold. I mean, it's just you need a lot of influence to upgrade the stronghold. Right now, we're going to need 85,000 to do this upgrade. We've got 366,000 and some change. This, we, we are constantly trying to stockpile this. One other way as a guild leader that you can get influence is to go up to a temporary structure. And I haven't built one because it does not give double influence during this, this event. And I've needed to keep the farm up because where we've been doing upgrades, we need the food to do those upgrades as opposed to burning a bit of food on the recruiter. And this right here is the recruiter. It uses profession supplies, it uses food, it uses metal, it uses stone, and it uses wood. All easily achieved. And it generates 800 um, influence about every eight hours, I think it is. So if you put one of those up, you want to tend it as often as you can. That way you're getting the maximum out of maximum out of the influence. Then you can also do things like here, pick up these. This will give you this normally only gives you 10 heroic shards, but during double it'll give you 20. And it'll pile up heroic shards really quick. Um, 10 tunes going out and doing uh, missions in the stronghold for heroic shards can get a lot of heroic shards in a short period of time for what your stronghold needs. Now that being said, there are a lot of people that do not want to mess with the stronghold. They want the benefits, but they don't want to have to go out and do the missions. They don't have to want to have to donate. And you see this a lot with your end gamers. They want a level 20 guild, but they don't want to help build a level 8 guild, a level 1 guild, a level 10 guild, a level 14 guild to level 20. They want to have someone else do it for them. And those people are fine to have, but they need to understand that complaints about the guild not being maxed If you're not contributing to the upgrading of it, then at that point, you don't really have any vested interest in the speed at which it upgrades. Like I said, we have done four upgrades. We've upgraded, we've upgraded the mine. We've upgraded the uh, marketplace. We've upgraded the quarry. And we've upgraded the lumber yard. And we've upgraded the farm within the last little bit. And all these structures are needed, including the barracks, to even begin to get this guild hall to level 10. Then once you get to level 20, there becomes another issue. Once you get 
maxed out. If, as guild leaders, you're not being proactive in burning off certain supplies, the easiest supplies for people to get and the things that people dump the most are dungeoneering shards because people will do dungeons every day to get their astral diamonds. Profession supplies, because it's easy to obtain through the workshop. You can craft some low-level, level one stuff and just dump it. You lumber. You logs. Yarn. Silver ingots. You know. Now, it will no longer allow you to buy these off the vendor like it used to. It used to allow you to buy them off the vendor and people would buy it and just absolutely fill it up and then nobody could do anything with it. Gems, because people will just drop a teal diamond, you know, a brilliant diamond. And it can, it very quickly fills up. Same thing with surplus equipment. Surplus equipment, you just drop gear. And those are the things that people drop most often. And you'll find people that are dropping gems, surplus equipment, profession supplies, and dungeoneering shards are not dropping treasures of tyranny, knowing that they are out there running it. They don't realize that those strands can be donated. They don't typically drop a lot of campaign currency, and they don't drop heroic shards and adventurer shards. So as a guild leader in a max level guild, you really have to look at ways to burn those supplies off so your members can continue to donate those things. Certain things can be built that will burn those off. That is the temporary structures. For one, the mysterious merchant burns gold, gems, and astral diamonds whenever you put it up. That's why I put this one up. It's because we were maxed out on AD. We were maxed out on gems. And we were maxed out on gold. This burned off all three. Plus it helped that I, we were upgrading other structures, which burned it off. Whenever you put up the recruiter, like I said, it burns the profession supplies. Now you look, the tannery doesn't burn off anything. Metal, food, stone, wood. Those are come from your production sites. The bloomery, the production sites. The bloomery, the production sites. The gem cutter, if you put it up and do not tend it, does burn off profession supplies. The assayer, you do not have to tend these two, the gem cutter or the assayer, unless you are really needing those items. And typically, if you're in an alliance, you will not need gold or gems. People will give you that. Um, it'll burn off gems and profession supplies. So... The gem cutter, the assayer, and the recruiter, as well as the mysterious merchant, are good to have up at all times if you are trying to burn off certain supplies. Another good thing to burn off is whenever you look at the stronghold, and we're going to show all because we don't have a production structure yet, nor, or a support structure. But if you look at the support structure, Siege Workshop, Animal Pen, Masonry Guild, Smelter's Yard, Siege Smithy, and Milling Yard. The Siege Smithy and the Siege Workshop are both PvP structures. The Smelter's Yard, however, uses things that are very useful to burn off. I suggest always building an Animal Pen, a Masonry Guild, a Smelter's Yard, and a Milling Yard and taking all four of them to max. And then you'll notice that you get one, two, three, three support structures. And actually, we do have two support structures. So five support structures. We do have a smelter's yard. The smelter's yard here, if you will look, it burns dungeoneering shards. It burns profession supplies. It burns AD and gold. Then later on, it burns surplus equipment, but it always burns dungeoneering shards. The best thing you can do 
as a level 20 guild that is maxed is keep one of these support structures open. Build you a smelter's yard. Build it up as far as you can build it. Once it's reached, if you run out of campaign currency at level 3, tear it down. Start over at 1. Just continue to build it up, build it up, build it up, tear it down. Build it up, build it up, build it up, tear it down. This is absolutely the best way that you can keep the most common things like profession supplies, um, surplus equipment, astral diamonds, the gold, the gems, and the dungeoneering shards burned off. And if you're not being proactive as a guild leader and doing that, you are failing your, your players. Now, another thing, if you are in the guild leadership spot and you are trying to still build your guild, say you have a level 20 guild but you don't have all your level 10 boon, or all your structures at level 10 and you are needing space for your people to dump, Upgrade. If you've got upgrades available that do not affect the other ones, upgrade those production structures to 10. And if you're needing heroic shards and influence and during Stronghold Week, you are not out there proactively as the guild leader working on and setting an example for others to follow, calling marauders, calling influence runs in the in the uh, stronghold. If you have dungeons that will award you influence, like Malabog's Castle for the level, for the uh, a level 10 temple will give you Malabog's Castle. If you're not out there, um, doing this, Currently, you're felling your players. There are a lot of people in guild leadership positions that want to hold the title that have no idea what that position requires. They're like, oh, I'm a guild leader of a level 20 guild. But you don't ever do anything that is proactive for your guild. You have failed as a guild leader. Uh, we are constantly doing things. I constantly run through, and I'll slack off a little bit when a new mod hits, but when Stronghold Week hits, the first thing I do is drop everything, and I start running content, and I'm constantly telling people, I'm running content. We are calling marauders. We are doing marauders. When other people call marauders in an alliance, we go out and help them to get stuff to upgrade, influence to upgrade theirs. Um, the alliance that this guild is in has been absolutely wonderful. They have contributed majorly to being able to get four of the structures we needed to rank four so we can work on getting that last structure, the barracks, to rank from rank three to rank four. That way we can work on going to from a rank eight guild hall to a rank 10 guild hall. This is just how you do things as a guild leader. If you're building a guild or if you're in charge of a maxed out guild, you have to take time and stop and think about your players. I know in game is fun. I know a lot of people do in game. But as we have said from the very beginning when the strongholds were put in, in-game players do not build guilds. In-game players do not build guilds. That is a hard fact. And it's not a shot at anybody that does in-game. There are some wonderful people that do in-game. And a lot of them understand they're not the ones that build the guild. 
and a lot of them help in other ways to keep the guild running and keep the guild active. But it is my job as a guild leader to ensure that those guild members can find places to spend guild marks whenever they need to for stuff that they do donate. The marketplace needs to be upgraded. The marketplace is the cheapest structure to upgrade as far as currency to 10. Anybody that tells you that at not having that you don't need a rank 10 guild or marketplace is telling you incorrectly. A, a rank 10 marketplace is an absolute must. That way, when your players come in, they can do a one-stop shop. They don't have to go looking for another guild in your alliance or leave your guild if you are a solo guild to go find a level 10 marketplace to spend their guild marks. And yes, this is kind of a rough video as far as what I'm saying. But Stronghold Week only comes around periodically. And as a guild leader, Stronghold Week should be the focus of your guild. It doesn't take long to do. A couple of hours throughout the week maximum and you can do stuff for your guild hall but if you're not doing anything for your guild hall do not complain when you have no place to dump stuff when you have no place or when you don't have rank 10 boons you know rank 10 boon structures to give you max boons don't complain if you're not donating to your guild. Do not complain when it's taking a long time to get the guild hall upgraded. It's rude. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about the guild halls at this point. Um, Stronghold Week is very important. Go out and do your missions. The missions are quick, they're easy. You know, if I start now, let's see, what have I got? I've got worker recruitment, guard recruitment, and I've got all these challenges. Oh, I look, I mean, I've even got, these are the barrack. Barracks 2, Reclamation Rock, do four heroics. Do four heroics in Icewind Dale. Do four heroics in the Well of Dragons. That will net you 35 influence, 60 influence, and 100 influence. So right there is 200 influence, but it is doubled, and you can get an extra 10%. So that would be 440 influence for those four quests which I am going to go do here in just a bit. Um, these quests don't take a long time. You can doing, you only have to do three if you want. You know, just look for a big heroic. Lake Crisis, probably not the one I want to do. Most people, if you look for this one right here, that's uh, Giants, the Undead Giants. I always look for no sympathy here. Bickering beholders right here is pretty good. These three, the assaults, uh, the assaults and the crisis, canyon crisis, like, oh, well, I think that one's crisis. Yeah, that's the assault. The crisis, these can, this is lake crisis, canyon crisis, and I think homestead crisis. These are three BHEs. Probably good for two people. One person can do it i can do it on my main can't do it on this one this one's a little light but he is just an alt anyway go out and do your stronghold missions help your guild grow and if you go out and you are in a level 20 guild and you have stuff that you want to donate and your guild leader is not being proactive they're not clearing out the profession supplies so you can drop them the surplus supplies so you can drop them. The Dungeoneer's shards. The gems. You know. 
gold AD, you know, if you're crafting AD chess. Uh, ask them to put up the temporary structures. Ask them for specifically for the assayer, the recruiter, and then you know have them set, tell the membership you don't have to you don't have to tend these. We put them up all the time in Fool's Brigade. This is Sword Coast Adventures. In Fool's Brigade, we put up those structures just to burn off supplies, so our players can dump those particular items. Not every guild does that though. Anyway, uh, good adventuring. I hope you've enjoyed my little rant and commentary on the guild. Um, please, if you're out in your if you're out in your guild hall, um, please tend your support structures or your production structures. Lumberyard, farm, mine, and quarry. Tend them regularly. Your guild, lo your guild leaders will love you for it. And here, um, you can see here beside Northgate and Maiden's Folly, two spots that will take either a farm, a lumberyard, a quarry, or a mine. Do not ever build those two into production structures. This one at Northgate and this one at Maiden's Folly, do not ever, as a guild leader, do not ever build those into a production structure. It is cheaper to take up the support structures, the animal pen, the smelter's yard, the milling yard, and the uh, whatever the other one is. The, we got the smelter's yard, and what do we got? You don't want to build, you do not want to build production structures on here. Four production structures are all you need to get your guild hall to level 20. You want to make an animal pen, you want support structures for that. What you want here is you want Northgate, a warehouse. Maiden's Hollow, a warehouse. Warehouses are absolute must for any guild if you want to have the storage capacity to do multiple upgrades without burning off all your supplies at once. And that's the last thing I'm going to say on that. Hopefully you enjoy this guild video. I'm going to upload it here just shortly. And uh, have fun amongst the Sword Coast. Peace.